Do you make your own embellishments but sometimes feel that they're not quite right? Do you look at what others make and want to do it too? In this week's video I'm making these collage cards, taking you through it step by step so that you can make them too. I'm going deeper into this today, beyond the cutting and sticking. I'm sharing my top design ideas to make your crafting easier. And it's not that I get it all right or know all the tips of the trade, but by sharing my tips and techniques I think you'll have more fun with your paper. It all began with this pocket folder that I made last week. We'd been using up scraps and book pages and I added this collage card. It's a satisfying way of using your scraps and really easy to do. So all you need to begin with is a small piece of card. I'm using this old calendar. I've been hoarding it in my stash. It's one of those things that you put on the side, knowing the cardstock's really great, but maybe not knowing how to use it. Each page in the calendar measures about three and a half inches by five inches. That's nine and a half centimeters by about 13. But for this project, really just use what you have. Have a look at the lovely pictures and maybe pick one with a picture that you wouldn't necessarily use in another project like this. I'm making a fold in the card, taking it slowly with that bone folder. So pressing down from the middle out to minimize the risk of ruffle. So getting a nice crisp fold there. And now what we want to do is choose a focal point. You've told me that you like botanical images like these flowers that I cut from a book. So one of the cards that I'm making today will be using an image like this. But I'm also going to make a card using a focal point that's a bit different. And in this way, I think it will help us use different supplies that we all have and allow more of us to use more of our paper. I know that we don't all have access to all of the lovely books and the book pages that I show on my channel. So I really do want to help us get the most from our paper. And if playing with paper is your passion too, then hit the subscribe button and that notification bell because I have lots more creative ideas to come. You can see that I'm housing my little images here in a range of different envelopes, like this cluster of images that I've cut from a book about antiques. I really liked this because it was, first of all, easy to cut out their squares and rectangles, but they have such lovely colors, those rusty colors, the yellows, and very lovely images that are of the right size. And I guess my first tip here is to look for images that are in the right scale, the right proportion that might fit on a small collage card. You could definitely use your digital images like this collection from Tracy Fox. I love using mushrooms and toadstools in my journal spreads. And if you can find an image in the right proportions, then wildlife pictures work really well. Sometimes these books are easier to find, whether that's online, maybe on eBay, or in a local charity shop or thrift store. This little image of a bird is great because it's got those punchy colours. You really see the black and white, but I need something a little bit smaller that will fit neatly on our page. So I'm going to make a collage card today with this cute little frog. As well as being a lovely chap, this is a great picture because of the colour palette that we see. I've got this neutral buff colour in the background and a little splash of yellow. And that means that in my little collection of papers here, I'm looking for something that complements some of those shades, some of those green and yellow and blue in smaller patterns if possible. So I'm picking out a few little sheets that I might use to collage with. And I'm also raiding my the little tub that sits on my desk that I fill with any bits and bobs, any scraps that happen to be the result of my projects. Neutral colours are great, so pull out any papers you have with those colours, but also pull out anything that simply inspires you because all of this is about using our papers to have fun and create a really satisfying project. One of my best ideas recently for making my life easy is to fill this little old Yankee candle box with papers that are all in the family of neutrals. And in fact, what I do is gather sheets and put them together on a bulldog clip. It's almost like a little book of scrap papers. 
And this makes it super easy to pull from when I want something that's in a range of shades. So what I do is stamp on book pages and paint them in a range of colours. And then when I want to choose one that fits with my project, I just flip through it and pull out something that might work. I've also included some pages from a local old road atlas there. So I pulled out a few pages here that I'm going to play with today. I want to add a strip of paper in the middle just across here that will give this little focal point somewhere to sit just like this it fits behind the picture. I've been really enjoying using up my scraps recently and making a reduction in the pile I don't know is that something that you enjoy too? Drop me a comment down below I would love to know how you use up your scraps. I'm tearing a piece from that book page the one that I had stamped and painted and I'm making the length of it just enough to give me a margin here and here. I'm folding it over carefully. I don't think we really need scissors. And I'm thinking how to position it so that the top left is slightly higher. The line of sight is running from bottom right to top left. And I just personally find that a more pleasant position for this first hanging piece of paper. I'm also sticking it on just below the center of the card so you can see there's more space at the top of the card than there is underneath it. You'll see that as we add the image as we affix that later and we add all the pieces of collage around it that positioning that first piece of paper on the cardstock in that way will just make things easier to decorate. So having that in your mind as you build up the layers is really quite useful. I've learned that tip from making cards in the past and it seems to work in our junk and art journaling too. Now I'm tearing little pieces from the papers that we chose and adding them behind the image, starting with a small piece just at the top left here. And I don't add it all the way around the picture, I'm augmenting just one corner and I'm just choosing another of those pieces of paper and tearing a bit off. I like these little dots, the arc, that seems to work well with the frog. And I'll use that to apply another layer, both behind the frog, the main image, just overlapping that first piece of atlas that I used on the top left. And what we're doing here is building up the layers in a way that are complementary, they're balanced, the colours work together and no one piece is too big. So it will still fit as a great image on the front of our cardstock and they all fit together really nicely. I guess what's different here is I'm building them up from the image backwards rather than sticking pieces down on the cardstock and building upwards. I don't know if that's different from what you do. Let me know in a comment down below. Do you have a method for your collages? Do you create something and tear it down, reduce the size like this, or do you just build it up and start with pieces that are the right size? Let me know, I'd love to learn from you too. It's time to add some balance at the bottom here, at the left and on the right. So I'm just really enjoying choosing from my papers, looking around, looking at the colours. And something I really like to include in my art journal pages as well as my collage is something with script. I've been using handwriting a lot in my traveller's notebook size journal so really enjoying making those spreads and it seemed to fit adding a little piece here. This is from a weather book that my mum kept so it has her handwriting on it and I just want a little peek of that word that she wrote describing the weather to sit behind. It makes it a little bit personal, a little bit special, but isn't writing special anyway in our junk and art journals? It will peek out to the right there. I think the balance still works. Those three layers of collage behind the focal point seem to be enough and one of my tips is to be confident enough to know when to stop. You don't need to put four pieces behind, you don't need to fill completely behind your image. I've added the image to the card so we even see this cheeky bit of paper at the top and still some space to decorate which we're going to do as well as appreciating all these layers. Everything's visible just enough. I'm adding some extra text using this really old stamp. 
you remember we saved some space on the page to add some extra decoration. I'm just using a regular ink pad. It's a pound one I bought from Hobbycraft, a local craft store, which is where I bought my lovely MIDI sewing machine that I've been using to make snippets. If you've got any type of stamp, then you could use that too, or you could get creative, get your pens out and play. The point here is to add something with contrast, something that helps the eye look all around the card. So we're stretching out the image and filling in this left hand side here. I'm bringing the picture together by putting a frame around the card and to do that I want to choose a pen in a colour that is the right balance complementary to the shades in that picture. The principle that I use is to draw a colour which is at least as dark as any of the colours in the image and what I normally do is have a little basket full of the most useful colours on my desk. You can see that I've pulled them from my lovely set of Arteza Inconic pens. Always really useful in a great range of colours and they have a fine tip so I feel like I can do handwriting with them as well as dots and dashes. Just getting my decisions made as to whether I round the corner and I think I'll do just one on the bottom right. I will add that extra emphasis, that extra tidy completion to the image by a dot and dash border, leaving a gap where the paper has just peeked out over the page, just here and here. And from a rather atypical image, I think we have a cute collage card. If you're using these to put in a pocket folder, such as the one I made last week, then drop me a comment down below and Tag me in pictures if you put those on Instagram or Facebook, I would love to see them. You can of course line the inside with some more of those lovely papers and depending on whether you want to write on it as you could with this piece, you could make it paler or even decorate the inside. The second card is a botanical theme so I'm using this flower that I cut from a book, starting with folding the cardstock in just the same careful way. When I cut images from a book, I, I need some help guys, I have a bit of trouble. If there's a really pretty image on the back of a page, I dither a bit as to which image to choose. So what do you do to get over choosing which image you're going to cut out and therefore which one gets compromised? Let me know in a comment down below. And I really am using my scraps today for the piece that goes across the centre of the card, I'm using some wrapping paper that came in an Ikea parcel. Some of that large quantity of extra dark paper that seems to come in every delivery. So I'm tearing a piece of that and placing it in the middle of the card, again just slightly lower than the centre line across horizontally. And that will be a place where we position the flower when again we've added some lovely pieces of torn paper from a random selection from our stash. I found a really pretty striped piece which has complementary colours so again trying to place layers behind which really pick out the colours in the image. There's that beautiful flower on the back of the one that I cut. I can't have both sides showing, I don't really know how to do that. So the stripey piece is going just on the left there. I've just chosen a small piece and I'll add more pieces all around it as we did with the frog. So I'm taking a really good look at the colours in that image and then picking from my little pieces of paper something in a complementary colour. We've got those orange and yellows in the stripey piece on the left. So to pull out another colour from the image, I've just torn a piece from my stamped and painted book page. That has some pretty text on it, so I've added that to the right hand side here. The greens in that piece of book page work well, and also the torn edge is a great contrast to the smooth edge of cutting that I have from cutting out the flower from the original book page. So maybe think about mixing up the edges of your papers as well as what's on the papers and the patterns that we see. And from that ubiquitous collection of neutral papers I've torn a little bit of brown and that goes really well at the bottom of the flower 
complementing those orange and yellow shades in the petals at the top. So again, we've got some balance. I seem to be using just three papers. That's working really well. And now we have a focal point that we can again add to our page. I'm placing it just to the right of center here so that we'll have more space to add some decoration. So I will be using the stamp again, but I'm also going to write on the card. And I think using any of your pens, any of your pencils and your own personal handwriting makes a collage card like this just incredibly personal. I just added a little bit of cheeky washi there, just something to add a feature. And I'm playing with that stamp again, again, building it out on the left hand side of the card. In this case, just slightly higher so that it's sitting on our pale piece of Ikea paper. I'm using an Inconic pen again, and this time in a deep and warm brown. And I'm adding a delicate border with shorter dashes to complement the pretty nature of the flowers that we've chosen for the image. It's time to add your own handwriting, your own words, whatever you want to say. I've just written the words beauty everywhere, which seems to reflect this page. And if you've enjoyed seeing me make this collage card, then check out my video on how to make a junk journal step by step. I think you'll enjoy that too. Hit the subscribe button and come back next time. I'll be filling a page in this art journal. I do a page every month, just playing with paper and paint.